Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and when we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we have an interesting episode for you guys. You definitely want to stick around for. So make sure you go ahead and like the video. Now, stop me if you've heard this line before. Keep that same energy. Where did we hear that line said before? That was what LeBron James told NBA fans when they had the nerve to question the construction of last year's Lakers. He told all of us to keep the same energy when some of us said, wait a minute, we have some question marks about the construction of this Lakers team, and we don't really think they're that good. So that's what he told all of us. Now, there is no question that LeBron is one of the 5'10 greatest NBA players of all time. There's no doubt about it, right? Most people are going to concede that. And certainly most will say that he's a top five NBA player of all time. And he has had many moments in his NBA career to justify his status. His status is one of the five, one of the 10 greatest players of all time. However, he does have one very bad habit. And that habit that LeBron James has is always over promising and under delivering. This is a chronic problem that LeBron has. His and 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 what we want to do is we want to play his first big promise that never came through. So for those of you guys who didn't hear LeBron James give his first big promise that never happened, take a listen to it here and we come back and react to it. But we also know you three kings came down here to win championships. Not one, championships. Not two. LeBron, tell us about that. Not two, not three, not four. Not five, not six, not seven. Oh. Hey, and when I say that, and when I say that, I really believe it. Now, for those of you wondering, when was that? That was actually in 2010 when LeBron and these guys formed the Miami Heat Big Three. And in that soundbite, he said, going to win over. well, that team won two championships, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. They won two championships. And now, with a recent post that he put on IG, he's back at it again. But before we get into his post, this video is brought to you by our sponsor, Aura, who's also the official sponsor in the Minnesota Timberwolves. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is today? It's identity theft. Imagine trying to log into your email only to see that your password has been changed. Then you start getting weird notifications from your bank and credit cards only to find out that all of your personal and sensitive information has been totally compromised. If you think it can happen to you and your family, just know that in 2020, over 49 million Americans were victims to identity theft, costing them a combined $56 billion. That is why we are excited to partner with Aura, who is the sponsor of this video. Aura is the number one identity theft and financial fraud protection. Aura monitors the dark web and alerts you if any of your passwords and accounts have been breached. And funny enough, after using Aura, I discovered some of my credentials were floating around in the dark web and the app showed me exactly when and where the breach happened. In addition, Aura allows you to set spending alerts and they'll notify you of any suspicious transactions. Aura is four times faster than any of its competitors in alerting you if someone is trying to open a credit card or obtain a loan using your name. And remember this, every 14 seconds, someone becomes a victim of identity fraud. Don't let it happen to you. Now click the link in the description and try Aura for free for two weeks and see if any of you or your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial at Aura.com slash Dreamers Pro. And when you try Aura by using the link in the description below, also know that you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So what we want to do is we want to read his latest post for you and then we'll come back and react to it. So this is what LeBron James, I believe it was 18 hours ago, 20 hours, one day ago, he wrote on his Instagram and he has an image. One thing for sure and two things for certain, you, you know I'll be ready. Year 20 is almost here. The time is ticking. So those were Le that was LeBron's latest post as he was training for the upcoming season. Now, some of you after reading that may say, Oh my God, this is a reach. You're reaching. That's what these guys are going to say. Oh, this is a reach. Well, it's actually not. And I'm going to explain why it's not a reach with one simple word. Expectations. Last season, I'm going to bring it up again. Last season, the Lakers were expected to be the team to represent the Western Conference in the NBA Finals. 
That was the expectations of the Los Angeles Lakers. They ended up missing the playing tournament with five Hall of Fame players on their roster to show you just how disappointing and inexcusable the se a season that they had. I'm going to juxtapose the Lakers with the Los Angeles Clippers. Last season, Kawhi Leonard did not play a single game for the Clippers. That's number one. Number two, Paul George played about half the season or maybe 40% of the season. And the Clippers still made it into the NBA playing tournament and they had a better record. Excuse me than the Los Angeles Lakers. And no one would accuse that the Clippers team of having a more talented player than Russell Westbrook, let alone Anthony Davis or LeBron James. That Clippers team made it into the play-in tournament. That's, the first, that's how bad it was last season for the Lakers. And coming into this season, what are the expectations of the Lake, for the Lakers? Well, one would assume that the Lakers would, we would at least expect that the Lakers would be at least a top four seed in the Western Conference, we would, we would at least hope that the Lakers would be able to make it out of the first round of the playing uh, of the what is it, of the playoffs this year. Now, here's and but here's the problem. Their roster. Is virtually the uh, virtually the same with the exception of Patrick Beverly. They basically have the same roster, but instead they added Patrick Beverly. One would think that the focus would be on the team's success. That, that's what one person would think. But there's no doubt that this season, going into this season, the number one headline for the Lakers is not going to be winning. The number one headline for the Los Angeles Lakers this season will be LeBron James passing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in points all time. And this brings me to the final question that I have for you guys. What's in it for the Lakers? Do Laker fans really care about that? I'm asking Laker fans. What's in it for you? If LeBron passes Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, that's an individual accomplishment. But again, I asked the question. LeBron could pass him. He could have passed him in Cleveland. He could have passed him in Miami. He could have passed him anywhere. So he's still going to have that achievement. But what's in it for the Lakers? Num number two, why should the Laker fans even care? If you're a Laker fan, why should you care? To me... This post, if I'm a Laker fan, would indicate that great things are coming. The question, however, is for who are great things on the way for the Lakers or are great things on the way for LeBron? To me, I think there are great things on the way for LeBron James, which is fine. But you still can't forget that he's still playing on a basketball team. And that's the issue, because when you put a post like that, some fans are going to get hyped up, believing this is going to be the year. And to me, I don't think it's going to be the year for the Lakers as they're currently constructed. People are still out there speculating that they still may trade Russell Westbrook. And let me just say this last thing on in, in closing. We all criticized Russell Westbrook last season. But what is happening to Russell Westbrook right now is unlike anything I have ever seen in my life. They are talking about Russell Westbrook on a daily basis like he is a nobody. Skip Bayless even had the courage to go out there and say that Patrick Beverly is better than Russell Westbrook. What? It has gotten that bad for Russell freaking Westbrook? It is unbelievable what they are saying about this guy. I think it has gone too far. Some of y'all are taking this a little bit too far. It is ridiculous at this point. He had a bad season with the Lakers. Let's not act like as if Russell Westbrook didn't carry that Washington Wizards team to the play in to the play in last year. Y'all need to stop. Patrick Beverly's better than what? Y'all need to cut that out. It's a little bit too much. These are my thoughts and opinions. Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Catch you all on the next episode.